but they have the type of personnel, Jim Gibbons, who really could give almost any team in the country fits as they did North Carolina, losing a tough one to them. I think you're right, Harry. They do have good personnel, and it's just one of those things. You, you can't put a handle on it. They are struggling. As we said, they've lost seven out of their last nine. I think the big problem, as others have said, is that they're a one-dimensional team. They really miss Adrian Branch from last year because when they doubled on Len Bias last year, Adrian Branch just took up the scoring slack. Now, they don't have a true pivot man. They just aren't getting in any inside scoring, and that has been a real problem, plus the fact I think they have seemed to lack a chemistry. They just haven't hit on it yet. They're young. They've got a pretty good bench, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how a non-ACC game, how they come out of the starting game gate against Notre Dame tonight. The game start is being delayed just a little bit. The scheduled officials for this game from the Southeast Conference were unable to land here at South Bend, Indiana because of the fog, so they are driving in from Chicago, and they should be here sometime after 8. Now, we're not going to start that late, but we have substitute officials, Jim Reinbold from South Bend, and Bill Saruk is also from South Bend. We'll be handling the officiating until the regularly scheduled officials arrive here at the Athletic and Convocation <laughs> Center. And now we're ready to meet the starting lineups. Here is public address announcer Jack Lloyd. Here are the starting lineups for the visiting Terrapins of the University of Maryland. At forward, 6'7 and a sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland, number 33, Derek Lewis. At forward, 6'8 and a senior from Lancaster. Over Maryland, number 34, Len Bias. At center, 6'8 and a junior from Glen Allen, Virginia, number 32, Terry Long. At guard, 6'5 and a junior from Gramsland, North Carolina, number 3, Keith Gatlin. One and a senior from Washington, D.C., number 12, Jeff Baxter. And his 17th season, a 1954 Duke graduate, Charles Lefty Drizel. And now, the starting lineups for your Fighting Irish. At forward, 6'7 and a junior from New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 15, Donald Royale. At center, 6'9 and a senior from Bayville, New York. Number 41, Tim Kempton. At guard, 6'5 and a freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Number 24, Mark Stevenson. A sophomore out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Number four, David Rivers. And forward, six eight, the senior from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Number 42, Jimmy Nolan. Head coach of the Fighting Irish, Digger Phelps. The opening tip off is just moments away, and we'll be right back. Convocation Center, we're set to go. Notre Dame and Maryland. Jumping center is going to be Donald Royal for Notre Dame. Normally Ken Barlow does, but Barlow is not in the starting lineup. And jumping center for Maryland will be their All-American Len Bias. Isn't that interesting? Neither one a pivot man, one six seven one eight. That's good. You can tip the ball twice on the way up, Harry, so that was legal. Bias gets the tap to Gantlin. Baxter with the ball for Maryland. Gantlin wears number three. Len Bias with Dolan on him. So Jim Dolan will really have his work cut out for it. Oh, they're playing him right straight up. Dolan against Bias. Here's Bias. Flicked away, the long saves it. They really look into Bias, who had 41 points against two. Yep. He scored every point by Maryland in the first, first four minutes and 56 seconds. Lewis is fouled by Donald Royal. 
Now Lewis will be shooting two. Derek Lewis, 75% free throw shooter, averaging eight and four tenths points per game. Lewis is a 6'7 sophomore. He's from Temple Hills, Maryland. He puts Maryland on the board. Derek Lewis will get one more. Well, that's pretty good if he can get a hot hand. Not that the first two free throws are going to mean anything, but he has a habit of disappearing offensively for them. Perry, and if he could get on a streak, that would really help. Lewis, one out of two. Notre Dame's first possession. David Rivers, Gatlin is on him. Joel, a nice speed into Kempton. Good fake. Tim's foul. Foul inside. He'll be shooting two. called on Terry Long, his first, and Kempton will go to the line. He'll be shooting two. Tim is a 74% free throw shooter. Now, I don't know if that's any indication of what Notre Dame plans to do, Harry, but Maryland also went into a man-to-man, -man, and Notre Dame pounded the ball right inside to Tim Kempton, who's being guarded, of course, by Terry Long. Notre Dame among the top 10, 20 free throw shooting teams in the nation. pulls it down for Maryland. But Bias said, Coach, don't be, don't be yelling. They got me right on the arm when I shot the ball, and they may have because you aren't going to see Len Bias shoot many air balls. No. Two on Notre Dame, 18-20 to play here in the first half. Stevenson free for the shot. The freshman, Mark Stevenson, makes it 4-1 Notre Dame. I've said to you before, Harry, I've never seen a freshman score that many. First or second basket, he's done it in about five or six games so far this year. He really plays under control and plays with a lot of poise for a freshman. Big five freshman from Philadelphia. Pass plays for the Harlem Globetrotters. Irish lead by three, Maryland with the ball. Maryland has been doing nothing but getting the ball into the hands of number 34, Bias. And Jim Dolan's done a good job on him so far. See, that's matching weight for weight because Jim Dolan is big enough and strong enough at 230 that he's going to be able to lay his body on bias most of the game. See, they're elbowing each other right now. Look at the foot, look at the play yep. going on. A lot of contact. Maryland turns it over. It'll be Notre Dame ball. See, that's one of the things that's been bothering him. That's just a total lack of concentration right there, Harry. Captain nearly lost it. Now Dolan. Stevenson, nowhere to go. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 30 seconds. See, that's good patience. In to Donald Royal. Royal, great feed to Dolan. He's rejected by Lewis. I guess a travel, Harry, before Bradley the block shot. He called a travel underneath. <laughs> Lewis can block a few of them. He's blocked 41 this <laughs> well, year. Well, listen, he set, he set a record last year with 99 shots that he blocked, 10 in one game alone. I don't care whom you're playing. That's not bad, 10 in a game. John Johnson is in now. Or Charles Grizzell along with Tom Speedy Jones. Edie Jones, baseline, back out to Bias. He stops and pops. Yes, by Len Bias, his first points of the night. He's been in double figures, 72 out of the last 73 games. That's 
One thing you don't mind doing is giving him the 18 or 20 foot jumper. It's the place down in underneath that you don't want to give him the ball. Stevenson, yes, by the freshman Mark Stevenson. Notre Dame leads 6-3, 1645 to play first half. Just curious, Harry, to see what John Johnson was going to do because this young man, who was the player of the year as a junior in Tennessee, he is really coming along. He's a great one-on-one -on -one player. I sense that he likes to penetrate more than stand still and shoot. Now Donald Royal is on bias. Jim Dolan is guarding Lewis. See, that's good because they'll just kind of take turns wearing him down and bias is going to have to work that much harder. Speedy Jones, it drops for him. Tom Speedy Jones makes it 6-5 Notre Dame. Now Royal nearly lost the handle. Stevenson strong to the basket, and he is really clobbered by Lewis. Eric Lewis picking up his first foul, and Stevenson will come to the line shooting two. Pretty good ball movement and pretty good patience by Notre Dame, Harry. I thought Tim Kempton and Jim Dolan both had shots that were really within range, shots that they both were hitting the last two or three games. But, you know, Digger's always looking for the patience. He's looking for the ball reversals, and they did move the ball. They swung it to the other side. He saw the lane and took it one-on-one. -on -one. That's good penetration. Freshman Stevenson leading four on the court. He has five points. Good free throw shooter, 89 per center coming into this game, averaging seven and one-tenths points per game. I don't know what they did about free throws, but whatever it is, they ought to bottle it. Really. Stevenson now is six to lead all scores. And there's a timeout on the court with the score. Notre Dame eight and Maryland five. 11 and 9 on the road, or rather 4 and 5 on the road, 11 and 9 overall. Notre Dame has been undefeated here at the ACC, 11 and 0, 14 and 3 overall. And the early going with 4 15 47 left to play in the first half. Notre Dame leading by 3. Notre Dame has used Jim Dolan and Donald Royal on Len Bias fairly effectively. Now it's Dolan on Bias. Maryland set up in a different set now. They've got two people at the low post, and they're going to give him more room to operate. That's pretty well, good. He can operate, can he? Or one on one, he's marvelous. You keep him outside, you've got a much better chance than when he gets inside because there's so many things, and that's what separates him from all those other players. So many things he can do. Myers, the ACC Player of the Year last year, good fake and shot, but a reject. Royal comes back to get his own rebound, and he's fouled. Good hustle by Donald Royal. Foul is going to be called on Tom Jones. It'll be his first, Maryland's third team foul. And Donald Royal will come to the line, shooting two. See, conversely, Harry, we've said it a number of times, but those that are Maryland fans that are watching, there's the same place that this young man wants to operate, and that's right into that three-second lane, because once he gets the ball, he has such great strength and quickness, he is really tough to defend. A rare miss at the free-throw line for Notre Dame. Donald Royal is a 77% free-throw shooter. them both. Dolan the rebound. Couldn't make the easy layup and it's pulled down by Jones. Johnson Gatlin now Jones. Always looking for number 34 on the chair. A 1-4. Almost like a 1-2-2 two, two, but they spread it out into a 1-4. Now Notre Dame has zoned them. Near steal by Donald Royal. Notre Dame looks like they're in a 1-3-1. One, one. See how they're matching out of it, Harry? See them looking? 14 on the shot clock. They get it to Bias into Lewis. Lewis in some traffic. Ball out of bounds. Last touch by Maryland Lewis. And Lewis hurt himself on that skirmish on the court. 
injured his left hand. Lewis will be taken out. Coming in to take his place, Tony Massenburg, a 6A freshman from Sussex, Virginia. Boy, that hurts, Harry, for several reasons. He is their best defensive player. He's their leading rebounder, and that young man is a great keeper. So you've got to hope for Lefty's sake and for Maryland's sake that that's not a bad injury. Notre Dame leads by 1-8-7. We have 14-22 left to play here in the first half. Maryland loves that man-to-man. -man. Lefty hates zones. He lives on the man-to-man, -man, and they play it very aggressively. This is two teams playing very good man-to-man -man defense. Working on Derek Lewis's hand. Mike Tomato. 8-7, Notre Dame leading by one. Captain. Shot won't go. Donald Royal offensive board, and he's fouled from behind by Speedy Jones. Jones' second personal foul. So Royal again will come to the line. Royal is 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Notre Dame is so big and so strong, Harry, with Kempton and Dolan and Royal. Boy, they bang away and bang away. And if you don't get into their bodies, and you aren't intensive and don't want to box out and concentrate on rebounding, you're in for a long night. I don't know how many second or third efforts that is on their shots. It's not a one-shot game for Notre Dame. It has been down at this end for Maryland, but not at that end for Notre Dame. And you just can't play that way for 40 minutes. Notre Dame is third nationally in rebounding margin behind Ohio. Michigan. Syracuse, Royal gets them both. Well, the Irish lead by three, 10-7, 13-55 to play first half. appears just to look for one bias. They're just shifting bias. Now, see, Dolan started out with him, and then he shifted him over to Royal. Now he's back on the other side. And now, they... Johnson, no rebound. Jim Dolan in the hands of David Rivers. Rivers all the way down court. Back out to David. Free from the shot. by Rivers. Rivers has his first point. Notre Dame up by five. I was curious to see how Notre Dame would come out of the starting game, Harry, especially after the overtime game against Marquette and a big game against Dayton as an independent on Wednesday, but they're playing very well. Inside to Massenburg, who blows the easy layup. Travel. Traveling violation call on Rivers will give the ball back to Maryland. a freshman from Maryland, also in there as a freshman. Not really, not really a scorer, Harry. Didn't score a point against Villanova the other night. Doesn't mind coming off the bench, but they're not going to get the offense from him. Jones the jump shot. Tom Jones, he has four, and it's 12-9. Notre Dame by three. Gatlin is on him. Stevenson, nice inside move. Mark Stevenson has eight points to face Notre Dame. The Irish lead by five. He's three of three from the field, two or two of the line, playing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what they're trying to take advantage of, see? by five. Bingo by John Johnson. I tell you, you don't have to be a genius to figure this game out. If Johnson and Lewis can continue to hit from outside, they won't be falling off on the bias as much. It's going to open up the inside. Now you've got the game where you want it, but they're going to have to keep hitting. Rivers all the way in. The prayer was answered, and the Irish back up by five. Johnson baseline, no. Rebound attempt by Massenburg. No, 
this time it goes for Massenburg. Very good hustle. Three efforts. That's the first time they've done that, I think. And that's good effort on the offensive board. Dolan, yes, and he's fouled by Len Byers. So Jim Dolan coming off the game of his career has a chance for a three-point play. Let's take a look now. Just don't only look up at the top here. Right there. See that? That's where he got him right after he had released that ball. That's good camera work. And I just happened to be looking at the defensive matchup, and that's why I caught it. He got him right at the top of the shot. Gary Bose, the 6'9 sophomore from Queens, New York, checks in for Notre Dame, as does Scott Hicks, now number 10. This is a 6'3 junior from Indianapolis for Mark Stevenson, who goes out leading all scores with eight points. Nolan's got it. Three-point play. 10.55 left to play in the first half. A timeout's been called with a score. Notre Dame 19 and Maryland 13. DN Sports happy to bring you this game tonight between Maryland and Notre Dame. Harry Callis along with Jim Gibbons for the Athletic and Convocation Center at Notre Dame. Tonight's game is being seen coast to coast on cable on the USA Network. Well, Notre Dame well out in front and rebounding. 8-3 and the Irish have out-rebounded all of their opponents this season except one. That one team that out-rebounded Notre Dame, American U. Pretty convincing. Notre Dame win. Well, their average margin, as you said, Harry, is 10, and that's pretty good. They've been up in the top 10 and rebounding margin the last three years. Baxter back in for Maryland. Notre Dame still matching. They're, they are so conscious of where bias is on that floor. Now, Scott Hicks is guarding him on the weak side, but that's all right because he's a great leaper. But you watch the help he gets if the ball goes inside. Ken Barlow also in for the first time. Jones, boy, he can sky his jump shot. He gets way off his feet, and Jones leads Maryland in scoring with six. Well, that's his average, so you know that that's a big plus. Now, I want to see... Got Hicks, good. Feed to Dolan, who lays it in. Jim Dolan with five from Hicks. And the Irish lead by six. See, they're matching, but see, that's the thing about the match. It's a zone on one side and a man-to-man -man on the other. You're pressuring the man on the ball. Now, see, Barlow is, is, see, Barlow is chasing him everywhere he goes. Well, there's a lot of uh -huh. activity lot going of on, and a foul is called on Barlow. But when Dolan was guarding Bias, I mean, Dolan was making a lot of contact, as was Royal, and now Barlow. Watch, look at there's Now watch. Now watch, see? Now that's that's how... There it is again. That's obvious. That's obvious contact, and you just have to call that because you've got to protect that man. Thirteen foul on Notre Dame. Nine thirty-eight to play first half. Irish lead by six. That's good. They show up plenty of time. is going to it now. Bolson Massenburg. Called on Massenburg. Massenburg is first. The 16 foul on Maryland in the half, and Notre Dame will be shooting one on one of the next foul of the Terrapins. See, that's the thing. That's the thing as an official, Harry, you've got to clean up. As I've said, I've done it long enough that you can let them play and let them fight for position, but there comes a time when you can't put up with that kind of stuff because one thing leads to another, then the game has gotten out of control. Now, there's going to be contact in there, but not elbowing and shoving the way they have been. The rebound pulled out by Speedy Jones. Yeah, he, put, he put Long back in, and he may be his enforcer. <laughs> Long side of the game. 240, so he can handle himself inside. Go, rebound, picked off by Len Byers. 
Maryland is doing a much better job, and that's probably because Notre Dame is in that matchup and you don't have those box-out responsibilities. Speedy Jones has come off the bench to score eight points. Notre Dame's lead is four, and here's a steal by Speedy Jones. Nearly stolen, but off the hand of David Rivers, it will be Maryland ball. man coming down the wing, Harry, on the fast break, and he could have bounced it right there, and he just took one dribble too many, and the, the path was gone. 21-17, Notre Dame. Away outside, Johnson rolls it. John Johnson, the freshman. Notre Dame's lead now is 2, 7.55 to play first half. coming in for the first time for Notre Dame. Oh boy, that was a perfect example of how one should rebound because Jones went up to get that rebound, but he got his body in the dole and it made him, forced him to climb his back. We have 7.42 left to play here in the first half. A timeout has been called with a score. Notre Dame 21 and Maryland 19. Field goal percentage is pretty even. Maryland 56%, Notre Dame 54. The difference has been at the foul line. The Irish 7 for 9 from the free throw line. Maryland 1 for 2. And Notre Dame leads by 2 with 7.42 left to play here in the first half. Well, the big plus, obviously, for Maryland, Harry, is the fact that they are shooting so well, especially Jones and Johnson has hit from outside. There's just no way, and as I said earlier, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. With the matchup, they're collapsing, they're trying to close off the inside. The only other option you have left to you is, obviously, to hit from the perimeter. Once you start hitting from the perimeter now, that widens that zone out, which opens the inside up, or you force Notre Dame to come out of the matchup and try another defense. Speedy Jones off the bench is Pace Maryland, number 41. With eight points, here's Len Bias. Yes, by Bias, he has six. And we are tied at 21. They've, they've run off a pretty good streak, and they are playing very well right now. I'm referring to Maryland playing very well, and they're playing very good defense at the other end. Milo nails it down. Notre Dame back up by two. Milo with his first point to the night. But Digger and the others were unhappy about, Harry. When you're taking that ball out of bounds, you get 80% of the count, which is five. So when that count, that count gets to four, you should no longer call timeout. Now, what happened? The Maryland player taking the ball out of bounds made that mistake that I've talked to you about before. You don't ever turn to the official and look at him when you're trying to get the timeout because the time is running, and if one of your players breaks open, you don't see him, and you can't get him the ball. I'll get it to the leaping Speedy Jones. 
Johnson inside, off the front of the rim, follows his own shot. Nice work by John Johnson, who has six, and we're tied at 23. Good job with Barlow underneath. John Connor to the corner. He's hitting better than 60% from the field. He has really come on. Well, Bigger said he's playing with more confidence each game, that he's a real spark, and that his enthusiasm really rubs off on the others, and he's giving him more and more playing time, which is important for a freshman. I tell you, you have two quality freshmen on that floor right now, in Johnson and, and Sean Connor. Notre Dame is really, really concentrating on Len Bias. There's a lot of hooking going on. There's a lot of shoving, all kinds of elbows. Milo just knocked him almost out of bounds. And bear in mind that there's an air ball by Jones and it's picked up on the court by Scott Hicks. Stevenson, Kempton will take the shot. Yes, by Tim Kempton. 542 to play here in the first half. See, that's the same shot we talked about earlier, Harry, that he did pass up. That's within Tim's shooting range. And if he doesn't put the ball on the floor and he can take that jumper, he's going to hit that eight or eight or nine times out of ten. Long right back out. Here's Bias. Bias up and over Scott Hicks. Oh. Perfect by Len Bias. He has a... Well, they're still matching, and they're still double-teaming and triple-teaming him before he puts himself into a position to get the ball. And the others are being patient enough tonight to give him a chance. Five minutes left to play first half. Notre Dame by two. time on the shot clock, 17 seconds. Stevenson strong to the basket, and the freshman has 10 points to lead all scores. And he's done a pretty good job against Baxter and against Johnson. See, Digger's trying to get him into a one-on-one -on -one matchup with those people because they're not as strong defensively as they will be later on, and Stevenson's taking advantage of them. He's four for four for the field. Basket does not go. Second violation, that has Lefty Drizel upset. Charles Drizel, in his 25th year as a head coach, didn't like that call by Jim Reinbold and lets you know it. The Southeast Conference officials who were unable to land in South Bend because of fog are driving him from Chicago. Regularly scheduled officials. They should be here by the second half, I would surmise. Great, great give and go on Tim Kempton's part. Just didn't handle the ball. Ball stolen by John Johnson. He just backdoored him and forgot to pick up the ball. I'm you, they're letting him play. Yeah, they're allowing contact inside. Left bias. John Johnson baseline. Johnson, no, doesn't get the roll. Whistle. David Rivers checked back in for Notre Dame. Digger Phelps does not like that call. Let's take a look and see if we can find it. He said kept it over the top. There's Tim right into the picture right there. A little bit of the body down below. A little bit of body down below, but didn't come over the top. There has been quite a bit of contact in this game. You allow a certain amount of contact. And I think these officials, being from South Bend, they don't want to blow the whistle all the time. They don't want to have a free throw shooting contest. And they are giving them a little bit of freedom. 29-25 Notre Dame. Bias. He's fouled by Captain Bias and he's shooting two. Free throw shooter bias is an 85 percenter. When he scored 41 against Duke, he was 13 for 13. Wow. Wow. You'll watch the hang time. Watch the important thing. Look at did you see the hang time? He waited until the last possible second till he caught Kempton coming back down that he could get that ball up on the glass. 
That's what makes him such an incredible offensive basketball player. Len Bias, before his career is over, probably will break the all-time Maryland scoring mark held by Albert King. King's number one, then Adrian Branch, then John Lucas, and then Len Bias. He has nine tonight. Not the only him. time he has been held to less than double figures in the NCAA tournament by eventual champion Villanova last year in the last 73 games. He's got 10 tonight. Barlow is going to be whistled off. A walking violation on Barlow. And Bigger Phelps not happy with that call. left to play here in the first half. Notre Dame leads Maryland by two. <laughs> Maryland not moving well without the ball. See, that's a little better, Harry. That's what I was going to say. You've got to have some more movement, especially against any kind of a goal or a matchup. I have what left these men about. Myers comes up with an air ball, 29-27 Notre Dame. Barlow, rebound knocked out of bounds, last touch by the leaping Speedy Jones. See, we've talked so many times against zones, you have to not only have ball movement, that's all everybody talks about, move the ball, but you've got to have player movement. If you just stand flat-footed and pass the ball around, the zone's not going to work at all. And Maryland last time just stood around a little too much. the hands of Barlow to Len Bias. Now Gatlin. Gatlin the playmaker. Holds the Maryland record for Led Maryland in assists last year and as a freshman. Rarely shoots. He's number three. See how far Dolan's falling off that wingman to try to help uh, down low with uh, Bias. Here's Bias. That's Boy, his spot. Cannot stop that shot. Bias has a dozen. Just figure he's going to get his 25 to 30. Shut down the rest of them, I guess. Well, he's making up for the game he had here a couple of years ago. He was only 3 of 11 when he played here two years ago. David Rivers, it goes for Rivers. And Notre Dame is back up. Rivers with six. Irish lead by two. Donald Royal will come in for Notre Dame. Barlow coming out. And a 44 to play in the first half. Irish have a two-point lead. Derek Lewis's first field goal of the night. We're tied at 31. Dolan wide open for the shot. It's perfect by Jim Dolan. Dolan has seven. See, those were the shots that Jimmy Dolan was passing up the last couple of years. Those are the shots he hit against Marquette on Saturday. He's back in the groove and playing with a lot of confidence again. Jim Dolan number to number with Len Bias. There is a lot of contact going on. Bias inside wearing number 34. Boy, he does work offensively, too. Yeah, you got to get up. That's better. they have still got five seconds on the clock. Jones, no. Kept in the rebound. Fast break, Notre Dame. Stevenson doesn't go. Donald Royal, though, the rebound. Stevenson just didn't know what to do, Harry, and he would have been better bringing that ball out and looking for a trailer, see, because he shot way off balance. Notre Dame was lucky to get the rebound. David Rivers with a penetration, gets his own rebound. No, fights for his own rebound. Out of bounds, it'll be Maryland ball with three seconds to play in the first half. That's a pretty good hustle by a six-foot guard, isn't it? He's got three rebounds. 
Rivers was frustrated at Cole Fieldhouse in Maryland last year. He was two for 13. That's a good substitution now. See, Baxter. he's going to get Jeff Baxter in, who's a streak shooter and a good shooter. Now, let's see how far up court Maryland throws the ball with only three seconds left on the clock. Look at this. All the way up court. Lewis. Yes. That basket will go, and that will tie the score at halftime off the hands of Notre Dame into the hands of Derek Lewis. And that'll tie the score. That's the end of the first half. The score, Notre Dame 33, Maryland 33. The score here at halftime is Notre Dame 33, Maryland 33. This is the 13th meeting between these two universities, and the record is dead even. Education of your life. The University of Notre Dame's main building with its Golden Dome is one of the nation's most familiar campus landmarks. Reconstructed after a disastrous fire in 1879 virtually destroyed the university, the building symbolizes the spirit of a place dedicated to religious belief as well as higher learning. It remains the crossroads of the campus where administrators, students, and faculty rub elbows with visiting alumni and tourists. And it continues to say one thing to all, Notre Dame. Thirty-three, thirty-three at halftime. We are tied, taking a look at the AP Top 20 just out. Today, and we'll find that North Carolina again is at the top of the AP Top 20. In fact, three teams from the ACC are in the top five. North Carolina, Duke, and Georgia Tech. Syracuse 8, Notre Dame will be playing Syracuse coming up in St. John's 10. Notre Dame is... Western Kentucky moving into the top 20. In the great independence competition, Notre Dame leading that 2-0, oh, having Paul and Mark kept those far. They will play at Dayton on Wednesday. At home, it's... 7 for 9, Maryland 3 for 4. And there stands the difference. Maryland only four turnovers in the first half. Notre Dame with eight. Well, the interesting thing, Harry, is that Maryland has converted on six of the seven, six of eight of those turnovers. Len Bias has really pushed around in the first half. Here, Jim Dolan just guarded him close. Bias with a turnaround jumper that he misses. See, that's not a bad move by him. That's a pretty good rebound by Tim Kemper. That's what you call going up to get it. He put those two hands on it. Now let's take a look. Watch the baseline here. Now watch the contact. Look at, look at, watch the contact. See out on the floor. Now there's a nice reverse spin by Bias. Very nice. That's Two of his said. 12 points. Here's the miss, and yeah. it'll be rebounded by both. Dolan. See, see him box out and go right to that board. Now watch, coast to coast by Rivers. Now watch the bounce pass here. That's great. Now watch Stevenson. See, now the reversal. The whole defense fell back in. Steve and that's very good judgment because Rivers just slid right back out and got the reversal. And Maryland was tied right before the horn ending the first half when the ball went right through the fingertips of a couple Irish defenders into the hand of Derek Lewis who tied it at 33. That's where we stand. 33-33 set to go for the second half. Jim Reinbold and Bill Sarukas of South Bend, the two officials that worked in the absence of the Southeast Conference officials. Working the first half, but the SEC officials have arrived. They're 
automobile trip from Chicago's O'Hare. They are Paul Galvin, Don Shea, and Danny Hooker. That's Paul Galvin that I'm sure many of our viewers have seen many times. He's worked a lot of basketball games and one of the best in the NCAA. 33-33, set to go with second half action. Notre Dame will have the ball on the alternate possession. Notre Dame will have Mark Stevenson, Donald Royal, Tim Kempton, Jim Dolan, and David Rivers. Same five that started. For Maryland, it'll be Len Bias, Keith Gatlin, Speedy Jones starting the second half. Jeff Baxter and Derek Lewis. See, the interesting thing, Harry, is going to be what happens with the officiating now. If you're a player and you have two high school officials come in, you figure they aren't going to blow us out of here, so we'll play this game the way we want to. Now see if the players back off a little bit because they've got these people working and they know they aren't going to get away with anything. David Rivers. He has eight points. Notre Dame leading by two. We'll see how they treat Bias, whether they treat him a little more tenderly than they did in the first half. Dolan's staying on him right now. Now there's still a lot of contact. Jones, you can't block that jumper. Speedy Jones has 10. And we're tied at 35. There's a call, see that? Right on the... Watch if we've got a replay. He put his hand right on the dribbler's hip, and that's what we've always said. You've got to protect the man with the ball. Gatlin picks up his first foul. Notre Dame will inbound. He left these up asking him, why are they taking the ball underneath their basket when the call was made way out here? He wanted the call made out at the sideline because there's a lot less things that can happen to you there. Traveling violation called on David Rivers, so it'll be Maryland ball. Jones off the bench for Maryland with 10 points. His season high has been 14 against Fairly Dickinson. Man to man for Notre Dame to start the second half, same as the first half. And we got the matchup with Dolan on bias. Dolan still a lot of contact, Dolan and bias. You can see them moving one another around. A jump shot is good from outside. His first point, probably the first shot he attempted all night. Maryland leads by two. Donald Royal inside for the easy layup. And we're tied again at 37. Gatlin did not attempt a field goal in the first half. That was his first attempt of the night. Tied at 37. Maryland ball. Derek Lewis into the hands of Gatlin. Gatlin, two for two of this half after not making an attempt in the first half. Maryland leads by two. He's a streak shooter. He can turn on. Last year, 13 of 13 in a game against Clemson. So you know the young man can shoot, and that's got to be a big plus. That's just another guy that can turn on for Maryland. Maryland up by two. 17-30 left to play. Kept it inside. Will not go. Rebound snared by Len Myers. Well, I want to tell you, the bodies are still bouncing off yes, of one another inside. So no, it's not being called any differently than it was in the no. first half so far. Believe me, they are really laying on one another. Look at look at what's going on underneath with Royal. Royal and Bias. Bias has had somebody on his numbers the entire evening. Here's Gatlin. Bias, high post now. Speedy Jones. 
got to get into some kind of an offense here because the clock well, is going to finally, finally call something. Called something. It's going to be on Donald Royal, I would guess. No, he's calling it's on Bias. bias. <laughs> Here's Bias. Watch now. Watch. Look at He just called him for hooking him with his left arm. There it is. Look at that right there. Good camera work. Yep. Yep. So Bias gets the foul. His second, the team's second of the half. It's 39 37, Maryland. 16 and a half minutes left to play in the game. Nolan. Good. Royal. He's rejected by Lewis for the foul called first on Speedy Jones, his third. Yep, he's got two, so he, he was on the way up. I was waiting to see if he was going to call it on the way up. Watch, good movement by Jim Dolan. That's a nice bounce, bounce pass because he knew that Royal was going to make on the switch, make the move to the basket. That's good teamwork. Now Royal has four points. He'll be shooting two, averages nine and six tenths points per game. for 10 for the free throw line tonight. Keeping up their fine percentage, which is among the top 20 in the nation. From the foul line. They're tied at 39. Donald Royal with six points. 16-20 left to play. They're just taking turns because now Jimmy, Jimmy Dolan is guarding by us. Now they're just switching. See, now Notre Dame has come back out on his own. They've changed their defense now. Gatlin, that one won't go, and the rebound grabbed by Tim Kempton. Notre Dame up quickly. Back out to Rivers. Stevens uh, in and out. A foul is called on Baxter. Jeff Baxter's first. Maryland's fourth team foul of the half. Stevenson will be shooting two. Mark is Notre Dame's leading score with 10 points. The freshman from Philadelphia, Roman Catholic. Stevenson has 11. His high 14 against Oregon and Hofstra this year. Great free throw shooter, hasn't he, Harry? 89% coming into this. Got them both. We have 15-52 left to play in the game. A timeout has been called with the score. Notre Dame 41, Maryland 39. Larry Callis along with Jim Gibbons, our statistician John Butera at the Athletic and Convocation Center, Notre Dame, Indiana. The Irish lead by two over Maryland, 41 to 39. We were tied at halftime at 33. Good field goal shooting Notre Dame, 63%. Maryland, 58%. Notre Dame putting a little pressure. First time, Harry, a 1-2-2 with Daniel Royal, who has long arms out on the front. See what happens. Let's see if they what they fall back into, whether they fall into it or whether they fall into a matchup. See, they fell back into a zone. He right from the one, two, two, cross back into a zone. You know, Maryland's gonna have to start moving around instead of standing around. And Len Bias isn't going to get the ball right there because the two front people are dropping way off and they're just triple teaming him practically. A little better now they're going and making some movement get it inside to jones turn around jumper no nope. rebound mark stevenson out to david rivers rivers to donald royal royal misses the shot len bias the rebound for maryland gadlin johnson johnson moving inside John Johnson has a... See what I mean, Harry? I've watched a couple of tapes on that young man. Boy, can he play one-on-one, -on -one and can he go in the open court? I mean, he has great moves. Stevenson inside. Going to be a traveling violation. He came down with the ball. No contact made by the leaper, Tom Jones. So a travel on Stevenson. We're tied at 41. See, the last time down the floor, Harry, Bias had the ball in the middle of the court, and that young man was smart enough. He put it right into Gat Gatlin's hands 
and he reversed the ball and got it over onto the other side to Johnson, who was wide open. 41-41, 14 and a half minutes left to play. Gatlin driving inside, will not go, and Kempton pulls down the rebound for Notre Dame. Here's Kempton. Stevenson passes up the shot. Tyus is giving go and everything he wears down at the other end. They've really had a match against one another. Stevenson has tied his career high. He has 14 points, and Notre Dame leads by two. Stevenson, the freshman, had 14 against Oregon, 14 against Hofstra. Good camera work. Did you see David Rivers pass that man right through? That lets you know that they're in that matchup. Derek Lewis, no. Kinds of bodies being hurled around under that basket, and the foul is called. Ken Barlow getting ready to come in for Notre Dame. Going to be on Dolan. Digger, if Digger finds that a little difficult to believe, and I have to admit to you that I did. He just hear what he said. That's bad. <laughs> Just the first team foul on Notre Dame here in the half. Now Johnson, look at those moves. The back. He goes right by people. John Johnson, the freshman, has 10. See, that's what I like to see because if teams play zones or matchups, people don't think you can put the ball on the floor and penetrate or move, and you can't. That's when you get the zone to move. Donald Royal rejected by Jones, but Royal stays after it. Another reject into the hands of Stevenson, and Notre Dame has it. Into Royal again, and this time he is hacked by Jones. Jones picks up foul number four. Fourth foul on Speedy Jones. Pretty good performance tonight. Good defensively. There's the reach through. Yes, sir. Good camera work. And right there, he was about a split second too late. He would have intercepted the pass. Evidently, that is Jones' third foul and not his fourth. It is Harry. His third foul. Team six and a half. To see their zoning on the out-of-bounds play because they don't want to give them that lay-in. David Rivers double figures with 10. Well, you can see it coming. You can see it coming. I don't know. He just, I guess he called it on Maryland. I believe he did. Yes, sir. He called it on Speedy on Jones, Jones, I believe. Jones Watch this now. Watch. Here it is. Take a look. Boy, that's a pretty difficult one to analyze and a pretty tough call. Lefty's not very happy about it. He didn't go into him at first, but I think he fell down into the Notre Dame player, Harry. Ken Barlow. Barlow has four. Notre Dame leads by four. He's going to get a timeout because they got the crowd in the game now, and that's a good timeout by Lefty. Charles Grizzell calls it timeout. We have 12.38 left to play, and the game of timeout's been called with a score. Notre Dame four. Sports is bringing you this game tonight between Maryland and Notre Dame. Harry Gallus along with Jim Gibbons from the Athletic and Complication Center at Notre Dame. Tonight's game is being seen coast to coast on cable on the USA Network. Both teams shooting very well in the second half, Harry. Maryland is at 5 of 8 and Notre Dame is at 5 of 7. They're both playing very well. I'm very good basketball game. Feeney Jones picking up his fourth foul. That hurts Maryland. He'll go to the bench and taking his place is Terry Long. Notre Dame leading by four. Glenn Bias, who has 12 points, has not taken a shot in this half, and we played almost eight minutes. Right. He only got eight points in the second half against Villanova the other night. He only had four in the last 15 minutes. You just can't let that man get out of your offense. Being handled by Donald Royal now. As bigger belts has switched Donald Royal. Jim Dolan and Scott Hicks on bias. This will be a foul and it'll be on David Rivers. 
See, there's the man that has done so much damage, and if he continues to do that, it's really going to present defensive problems for Notre Dame. It really is, because they're still matching and everything, and playing almost a one-on-one you know, -on, -one on Len Bias. Wherever he goes, they're shifting him from one player to another, but he's causing them problems by penetrating to the basket. John Johnson, a 6'4 freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee. Tennessee High School Player of the Year, 71% free throw shooter. He has 10 points so far. Missed them both, and Barlow the rebound. Notre Dame up by four. They have the ball. The interesting matchup because Johnson is guarding Stevenson. Drives to the alley, Ooh, not a good pass, and Royal steps on the out-of-bounds line, it'll be Maryland ball. See, that's the play that they use so often. Stevenson came up and tried to put a pick on Royal's man, but Royal didn't run his man into the pick, and when a pick doesn't work, it's not so much the man that's putting on the pick, but it's the offensive man that doesn't ran, run the defensive man into it. And that's what happened. Notre Dame by four. We have 11.50 left to play. This can happen to you. He played well against Wake Forest. He played well the other day against Villanova. Stevenson jumped right in and took the charge. I still say they've got to get the ball into the hands of Glenn Bias. David Rivers. Rivers has 12 points. Notre Dame leading by six. 11.25 left to play. Traveling violation called on Glenn yet to take a shot in this half as we look at coach Charles Grizel. Maryland has gone into a dry spell and this is what happens to you when you're struggling Harry. You've got to play consistently for 40 minutes. You've seen so many teams play so well for 20, 30, 35 minutes that all of a sudden you lose it and now they've got to get, they've got to stop Notre Dame from scoring right here. I wouldn't be surprised if Lefty would get another timeout. 49-43, Barlow a good move around Byers. Ben Barlow has six, and the Irish lead by eight. Well, he said no, go ahead. They turned because they Gatlin thought he was going to get a timeout, but Lucky said keep on going. Well, here's two of his timeouts. And there it is again. Yep, turnover, go to Notre Dame. Dee Jones is going to check in and try to stop the bleeding for Maryland, even though he has four fouls. Coming out is Terry Long. They have turned the ball over, Harry, I believe, three out of the last four possessions. They have the charging foul, they have the traveling foul, they have the kick out of bounds. You can't do that against the team of caliber of Notre Dame, and now the lead is just going to go up to 10 if they score here, and then you've got to work it out for you. Maryland had only four turnovers in the first half. That's going to be a walking violation on Barlow, and Maryland will have the ball. Really, really on FC saying, take your time and settle down and relax. They're the ones that have to come get us. We've got 45 seconds to burn off the clock and break down their defense. And an eight-point lead here with 10.25 left to play. The bias is not going to get the ball standing on the on the free throw line, Harry, because he's just surrounded by too many Notre Dame players. See? He has 12 points off in the first half. There he is. Now, see, they just waited too long because they had the reversal, and he broke down to the basket to put himself in position. Johnson puts it up, no, and the rebound picked up on the court by Donald Royal. Off the fingertips of Barlow, he saves it to Royal, and now to the hands of David Rivers. He did have just said, please settle down and run the offense. Which Rivers will do for Coach Belt.